This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Preflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Some of you rich and don't even know you are because you only think rich pertains to money. But I'm telling you to be rich in love and rich in joy and rich in fellowship and rich in all of these things that we seem to neglect. I am saying this is the day that we want to show thanksgiving to Jesus for allowing us to live this life. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for my life. When you give, your gift goes to work, spreading the gospel, uplifting communities, connecting believers from all over the world. It's easy to support the ministry with your giving through Change Express. The process of giving has never been easier for those on the go, so get started today. Go to www.creflodollarministries.org forward slash Change Express now to sign up for Change Express. Easy, automatic giving. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. You really have to settle down and think to yourself, man, he's been good to me. Yeah. You have to really settle down and think about all the stuff. Sometimes you can get so distracted with what's been happening that you don't pause and say, thank you, Jesus. Why? Because what could have, should have, would have happened, but the hand of the Lord was in your life. Come on, give it up to him right now. Give it up to him right now. Amen. And on these days when we begin to praise God and worship God, it was just so heartfelt. And I want you to join me in this. This is old Baptist hymn. It says, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for my journey. Oh, you brought me from a long, long way. Ah, huh? oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for my journey. Oh, you brought me from a long, long way. And he sings something like this. somewhere and 
church and the school be saying, Hallelujah, anyhow. Never, never let your problems get you down. Oh, and when life problems come your way, hold your head up high and say, and just greet two or three people and just tell them you love them and I want to share some things with you I, I, I feel you can take with you throughout the day and it'll be a blessing to your life I want to talk to you about living the grateful life it's not just you know a cliche or something it's just something that really so powerful that happens when you live this life you know, when we give God our thanks and praise the way the Bible tells us, we release supernatural authority over whatever situation we are facing. And God knows that some of you have faced a lot of different situations so far. And yet, biblical thanksgiving is not just a worldly holiday tradition or a religious activity, but rather it's an everyday spiritual tool that we can use to stay on top and defeat the devil. Uh, thanksgiving is what frees us from stress and the pressures while God is getting personally involved on our behalf. And when we are grateful and when we are thankful Christians, powerful supernatural forces from heaven are unleashed that cause things to work for us the way that they should. You know, one of the things that's very tempting, and we've got to be very careful not to do and allow ourselves to get there is that when things are not working the way that they should work in our lives, sometimes there's a temptation to sink into self-pity. And I want you to know you can do that, but if you allow yourself to sink into self-pity, you miss out on what's on the other side of all of the attacks that come your way. I thought it would be awesome for us to get together this morning so that whatever may be working right in your life, you can be thankful for it. Whatever may not be working right right now, you can be thankful that God's got a way out of that thing. And it's just something about coming together and leaning on one another so that we won't yield to that self-pity because when you yield to self-pity, you open the door for the enemy to come in and just try to destroy your life. Don't allow one day to mess up your whole year. Amen. You know, it's just one day, praise the Lord. And we're thanking God for this particular day, but so, so many people allow the pressures of this one day or things didn't work out one day or who showed up or who didn't show up for this one day or, or what, what got cooked and what didn't get cooked for one day. 
Turn your neighbor and say, chill. Chill. Because we are not here celebrating us. We're not here celebrating you. We want to turn the attention where it really belongs. We want to turn the attention to the Lord Jesus Christ, where we can focus on Jesus Christ, and you can start when your eyes opened. Thank you, Lord, that I can see another day. You want to focus on Jesus Christ, who allowed you to, here's what we used to say in the Baptist church, he allowed you to wake up in your right mind. Oh, come on, somebody. Still having use of your limbs. Amen. Still being able to see. You can, you can start off with small things, but when you don't have the use of those so-called small things, they all of a sudden become very big things. Amen. And so it's the attitude of just being grateful. It's the attitude of being grateful for, for, for first of all, you know, you and your relationship with God. And how can God use you on this day to share with other people what he shares with you? Amen. This day of staying away from self-pity, staying away from, you know, allowing your emotions to govern your day, Amen. don't do that. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will, come on, rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Amen. And so be glad today. Be glad today. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. And, and I want to show you that there's, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of power that God intends on releasing in and for our lives if we won't neglect thanksgiving, if we won't forget to be thankful. If we don't allow ourselves, you know, in Malachi, I believe it's chapter 2, they were judged because they didn't give thanks. Thank God we're not under that. Amen? Amen. But look what he says. I'd like to see this in the King James and then the Amplified. He says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What an odd thing to say. He said, in everything, give thanks. Not, he didn't say give thanks for everything. Don't give, don't thank God because you ain't got no gas. Don't thank God because you just got beat up by your husband. That's not what he said. He said there is such a power invested in the sacrifice of thanksgiving that he said, do it in everything, no matter what it is. When it's good in that, give him thanks. When it's a little interesting in that, give him thanks. When you don't even know what's going on, pause and give him thanks. Now, look what he says in the, in the Amplified. He says, thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. And, you know, we all have different kind of circumstances. We've gathered here this morning, and there are lots of circumstances that, that are represented in this room. There are financial circumstances. There are physical circumstances, circumstances with your help, relationship, circumstances with your relationship. I mean, it's Thanksgiving, and, you know, you're not getting along, and all kinds of circumstances. And I am saying, pause. What, what Taffy just said, Selah. And just thank God. For what? Thank him for the other side of whatever you may be going through. Thank him for the answer. Thank him for the good part of whatever you may be going through. I tell you, it's an anointing. He said, no matter what the circumstances may be, be thankful and give thanks. So not, not only to give God thanks, but be thankful. Be thankful for where you are right now. Be thankful for what you have right now. Be thankful for the job you have or the one you're getting ready to get right now. And if you can't find nothing else to be thankful for, be thankful that you have a God that sits high and looks low. Amen? Amen. Be thankful and give thanks for this is, this is a powerful statement, it's the will of God for you. It's the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. Those who are born again, it's the will of God. It's the will of God that you give thanks. It's the will of God that this is not, uh, you know, uh, just a once in a, in, in a year thing. It, we live a thankful life because thankful Christians are going to be fruitful Christians. And you have a father who wants his children to be fruitful. But it's difficult to be fruitful if you don't respect being content. We got to learn how to be content. There's a profit that comes from being content. 
Yeah, maybe things are not exactly like you want it. And maybe it didn't work out exactly like you wanted it to work out. But thank God, I am going to be content where I am. I am going to learn how to be thankful where I am. There's something about learning how to be content where you are right now before you'll see progress for where you want to be. But there's nothing that happens when you open your mouth and allow a bad negative emotion to move you into a place of not being grateful. And most of the time, we get to that place of not being grateful when we start comparing ourselves amongst ourselves. When we start comparing what you have with what somebody else has, when you start comparing somebody's family with your family, when you even start comparing a commercial, a public commercial, where everybody at the table having dinner and everything together, oh, that ain't me. When you do that, all of a sudden you lose contentment and you become ungrateful and you start complaining about what you have and where you are. So you don't drive a Mercedes, so you're driving a 1975 Honda, but that Honda hadn't let you down that one day. And one of the things you gotta be careful is when you start, you know, being critical and ungrateful for what, for what you already have. I mean, God has done something for you. You need to be appreciative of what he has done for you and in your life. But when you start comparing, you start belittling the blessings of God in your life. I said, when you start comparing, you start belittling the blessings that God has given you in your life. So everybody always thinks they have it worse off than somebody else until you can get in somebody else's shoes. Oh, you think I wish I could be them until you get in their shoes. It's either to smile and put paint on the face and come to church and look happy. Some of them folks would trade their mansion to be a part of your 1,000 square foot house where they can come together and be rich in the love of family. Some of you rich and don't even know you are because you only think rich pertains to money. But I'm telling you to be rich in love and rich in joy and rich in fellowship and rich in all of these things that we seem to neglect. I am saying this is the day that we want to show thanksgiving to Jesus Amen. for allowing us to live this life. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for my life. I'm, I, never, I never thought I would even have a time where I would see any any joy in, in cooking, but it's, it, this might be my fifth year cooking my Thanksgiving meal. And I'm not, and I'm not cooking for who come. I cook a feast every year. I don't care who come, don't come. Because <laughs> Friday is leftover Friday. <laughs> well, they didn't eat all the ham. Well, it's ham sandwiches Friday and Saturday. <laughs> You got to learn how to be thankful for the small things in your life. And I tell you, that's how you get promoted to the big thing. But God wants you to be thankful all the way up. Every step you take, be thankful for. So you got to start where you are, being thankful. And then there's another step, being thankful. And then there's another step, being thankful. And there's another step, being thankful. And in one of those steps, you're just going to have to break down and just cry. Lord, you just don't know I'm so doggone blessed. And then nobody understands your tears but you and God because there's no way you should be where you are right now except it was for the Lord. There's no way you're supposed to have what you have right now except Jesus got involved in that thing. There's no way that you can be free from the shame and the guilt and the condemnation that you, you, you thought you would have, but the Holy Ghost started working on the inside of you. And here you are today giving thanks that I'm not what I used to be. I may not be what I want to be, but at least I'm not what I used to be. Thank you, Jesus. That's, that's his will. That's his will. Somebody says, well, I don't know what the will of God is for my life. That's because you're not abiding in the very plainly stated will of God for your life. Be thankful. Sometimes you get so frustrated looking for what you're supposed to do, you're just not thankful for where you are right now. Amen. Now, so that's the will of God for us. Begin to practice that. Amen. Begin to walk in that. Use today as an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to be more conscious and more aware of taking the time to just be thankful where I am. Sometimes we're so 
you know, you know we're, we're focused on moving ahead and not being grateful for just where I am. And I believe the gratitude and the thanksgiving is what prepares the next steps in your life. So if you've been wondering where are the next steps in my life, let's start with being gracious. Let's start with being thankful. Let's start with the will of God for your life. And I believe that, I believe that all things are going to be made clear to you on exactly what you need to do, how you need to do it, when you need to do it, how you need to do it, and all is well with you. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to this next scripture, Luke chapter 17, verse uh, 13 through 19. This is very interesting here because... Uh, Lord, I wrote so fast, I don't even know if it's that a 17 or a 7. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, this is it. And they lifted up their voices, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse, and when he saw them, now this is a story about the, uh, these, these guys who had uh, leprosy. And um, at that time, you know, they didn't have any cure for that. And so they heard about Jesus and healing power in his life. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, underline, and as they went, as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. I believe the Lord is going to begin to speak some things to you, and as you go. See, sometimes we just sit still in fear, not wanting to move because we're not sure exactly where it's going to end up. But sometimes things happen as you go. Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe tonight, today, as you came to church, some stuff was happening, praise the Lord. So you can sit and worry, but you can also just move, just begin to step out. And as they went, they were cleansed. All right, now watch this next verse. He says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, one of them, he turned back. One turned back. And with a loud voice, he glorified God. Amen. I imagine it sounds like a, a, a Baptist glorifying God. Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but I, I, that's... And verse 16, now watch this. And he fell down on his face. Wow, has God ever done something to you so amazing that it caused you to just fall down? Yes. Fell down on his face giving him thanks, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now watch this in verse 17. And Jesus answering and said, uh, excuse me, but were there not ten? <laughs> How come you the only one came back? Were there not ten? He said, where are the nine? Lord, have mercy. There are not found that return to give God glory or thanks except this stranger. Now, remember I said to you, wherever there's thanksgiving, there's going to be fruitfulness and manifestation. Mm. Verse 19, and he said unto him, arise. Now, that word arise means to change your posture and your position. Arise, go your way. Your faith has made thee, watch this, whole. Everybody say whole. whole. Now, you've got to understand about leprosy in those days. They would be missing uh, fingers and, and limbs, and uh, it would, the infection caused them to miss out on some things. So they were healed of leprosy, which means leprosy was stopped. It stopped, couldn't mess with him no more. But he, this one guy didn't stop. He showed gratitude. Amen. And Jesus said, oh, for you, be made, watch this, whole. That meant that if there were fingers missing, they had to grow back. Because you're not whole if there's something missing. My question to you this Thanksgiving morning, yeah. 
You hear what I say that? Moaning, not morning. Moaning. <laughs> My question to you is, what is missing in your life? Mm. And the way you deal with what's missing in your life is you do and you, you check out what this guy did. He gave glory to God. He gave thanksgiving to God. And Jesus, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. What was he saying? The way you responded in thanksgiving has restored whatever was missing in your life. So if there's anything broken and if there's anything missing in your life, I'm advising you this morning to give God the glory and to give God thanksgiving and he will restore whatever is missing and whatever is broken in your life. Somebody shout restore! It's common to count our blessings and tell what we're thankful for around the Thanksgiving holidays. But what does godly Thanksgiving look like? In Creflo Dollar's three-message series, How to Live a Thankful Life, he reveals how thankfulness in the life of a believer causes supernatural results. Thanksgiving is the antidote to this soul sickness. Whatever the circumstances around you, cultivate Thanksgiving within you. It's God's will for your life, and it's good for your soul. What's good for you is thanksgiving. What's bad for you is to complain about it, to murmur about it, to worry about it. And I'm telling you, there's a powerful supernatural result, an anointing that's waiting to serve the thankful. This series can be yours today for a love gift of 20 U.S. dollars for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars for DVDs. Simply call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Don't miss out. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.